What's up folks, it's Two Bricks, and I did say that I was gonna start on my Venator class Star Destroyer model, my 10 foot long monster project. Uh, and I wanted to get going because, um, you know, a lot of times when big projects like this are announced, you kind of start with some planning and you maybe, you know, sketch out some skeletal structure, and then you begin to slowly, slowly assemble something that eventually will resemble the thing that you're trying to make. But I wanted to just dive right in and say, screw it. I already know the dimensions of certain parts of the ship, like for example, the bridges. And uh, I just wanted to dive right in and start making something that's like finished, you know, like that's a, a finished piece that we can see for an idea for scale of what this thing is going to look like in the end. And I just, I brought out a couple of uh, iconic and recognizable ships that we've seen on screen relative to human beings. And I wanted to just give you guys a little bit of a size comparison here at the start to get an idea of just how massive this ship is. I mean, it, it's over a kilometer long, so you already, like, you can, in your mind, you can kind of understand and comprehend how big it is from that measurement alone, but just actually seeing the bridge that we know that we've seen the interior of on screen next to these other ships where we've seen people, you know, in Rise of Skywalker, we get a really good sense of how big um, the Tansy V4 is, and then also, obviously, the Falcon, people know inside and out, super familiar with that um, and then getting to see that alongside this is kind of crazy like this thing you could fly the Millennium Falcon through the center of this if if the walls were thin enough uh, that's how that's how big this bridge is which is absolutely nuts to think about um, and I guess it makes sense because you know in on screen we do see particularly in the Clone Wars we see the main bridge with the the trenches and everything but then we see back here there's like all these rooms where they're strategizing and there's um, hollow displays and strategy meetings and, and offices and all kinds of things. There are hundreds of people working just this bridge alone and there's two of them. And then that's just a tiny, tiny portion of the ship. I mean, if you look at the ship overall and then look at the bridges, it's such a teeny tiny bit of the overall thing. So it just really does give you this awe-inspiring feeling building something like this to know just how massive this stuff is. Uh, and that's the fun of working at scale. And that's one of the reasons why I'm building this gigantic thing is to really show and to feel the scale difference between all of these different ships in the Star Wars universe. So uh, I'm going to be showing you guys a, a detailed close up today of what I've built, uh, go over a little bit of my plans for the future and how I'm going to start uh, tackling this project. And um, and that's going to be the video for today. And we're, we're off to the races. Venator part one has begun. Here we go. Hey guys, so while I'm here uh, at my computer and just kind of messing around a little bit with uh, some studio planning here, I just wanted to take a segment or a section out of my video here to show you guys kind of how I'm approaching the planning for this. Um, essentially, what I have is, so this is uh, Lego Studio uh, by Bricklink. This is the software that I use to do all of my uh, instruction making and all my digital building, translating my models into um, you know the computer. So uh it made sense for me to uh do the planning stages in here as well because it can give you real world scale with lego bricks as well as the ability here to like you can see add reference images um so i have just a simple blueprint that i thought looked pretty accurate and pretty good and i downloaded that and i just chopped it up and um in, in photoshop and i just uploaded all the different angles and lined them up to what I know to be the real world scale. And um, we have the ability here to lock down the camera to specific angles. So I can go ahead and look at the front side, top, bottom view, whatever I want. And so what I did is I uh, first initially created, you know, a 379 stud long uh, piece here um, because I knew that that's what the overall length of the Venator was gonna be. And then I scaled all of my images down to that and then made sure that they all match. So. Uh, pretty simple really and then so whenever it comes to like if i want to you know uh, do a new section um so i'm looking at the bottom not the top here my bad so whenever i want to start a new section i just go in and like i did with the bridge here i just measure it out by just literally placing down lego plates and uh, until i have the right kind of dimensions and i was just experimenting here to see what shape the front of this should be just really quickly with a couple of uh, pieces there and uh, that allows me to just have a plan so that once I start building, I know you know pretty much what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, that's kind of how I'm approaching the whole thing. I'm not gonna be doing any detail building in here or anything like that. It's just all gonna be um, figuring out rough angles and plans. So like I, I just kind of, like you can see here, I roughed in one of the red stripes to see how big it is. And just so I have an overall idea for when I actually go to do the real thing. 
I have a rough idea of what I'm dealing with. So that's that's that. Um, and you can see here, I'm just experimenting with ideas for how to represent the different uh, shapes. So I have just stacked up wedge plates here to see how that would work. And then I also have just angled building in here and then, um, you know, just just playing around. So uh, that that's kind of the, the main planning. Um, the program is really useful because I can, in addition to being able to tumble around, um, you know, in 3D and get an idea for the scale of things, I can also turn off um, and lock these reference images as needed. So I can't accidentally select them and move them around because they're all currently locked. And I can also turn them all off individually and just get a look at just the model um, such as it is. And uh, and also like if I select a bunch of things in here, uh, I get a little bit of a readout of information down here where it tells me the size of the, the thing I currently have selected in studs. So it's 204 studs long and uh, two studs wide by one step thick. And then I can kind of sort of say if I grab the whole thing there, I know 379 studs by 182 studs is the dimensions of my build. And um, that's just really handy because I can do something like build, you know, rough approximation here for the circle logo. And I know that that's a 20 by 20 area. So now I can play around with that. Um, and I know that that's kind of the, the confines that I have to work within for the build. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Um, and uh, you know, being able to just add as many, you can add as many reference images as you want. So this is how you do it here. You go model, add reference image. Um, I'm pretty sure that you can do PNGs or other formats that don't have, uh, that have the transparency built into them. So you don't need to see the black, like what I have on mine. Um, I just didn't bother to do that. I just exported JPEGs to keep it simple. Um, yeah, that's about it really. I just wanted to kind of share with you guys how I'm planning this out and how I know the scale that things should be. Uh, and you know, the, between the orthographic cameras, the ability to uh, look at this front and back, um, you know, straight on like this, and also be able to actually like tumble around and stuff in these views. Um, between that and uh, uh, the ability to add reference images, that's pretty much all I need for the planning for this. I don't think anything else is going to be um, getting in the way, uh, or any other programs. I don't think I'll need to to use. Um, so yeah, that's about that. So there you go. All right. So here is the bridge. Um, and you can see here, it has a lot of nice details to it. So we have the underside portion here with this round section that is quite noticeable on various models. We have the, obviously the windows here that you can see through. Um, and then also we have these kind of recognizable sort of quadrant of window type looking details here, like this four pane thing. And then this I think probably the most iconic thing of the bridge is this large mounted circular thing that's off to an angle like this. I have no idea what it does. I could probably look in one of the, um, you know, uh, ultimate, uh, what do you call it, cross section type drawings and take a look and see if that this is uh, called out to what this is. But really what it reminds me of is on the top deck of um, ships, you get those big um, sort of uh, outlets for like, I don't know exactly what they do, really steam or something, uh, who knows? <laughs> I, clearly you can see how much I know about ship design, but they have these large kind of um, tubes that kind of look like Mario would jump in them sometimes on the top deck of like large old timey ships. And this just reminds me of that. Um, and then we have this nice section back here with the bulk, it kind of almost looks like engines. Like my head cannon now for this is that the bridges of the Venator <clears throat> can like break away from the ship in, in case of an emergency and propel itself away like a giant escape pod for all of the command crew to <laughs> escape disaster. I, of course, don't know if that's true. Just my headcanon. Um, but yeah, there's several things that I took into consideration while designing this. Number one, I want it to be as light and hollow as possible. So all of this interior space in here is completely hollow, uh, going all the way back. And then like you can see here, I'm, I'm doing just the most barest, uh, you know, light construction that I can in order to keep this thing light, because this model is going to be tremendously heavy when it's done. And I want to reduce that as much as possible as I go. That doesn't mean sacrificing on detail. It just means being smart about where you place things. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, and then, you know, filling in the details to a level that feels right without going overboard. Like I really want this to feel, um, you know, the closer you look at it, the more details you see, but the further away you get, the more kind of the silhouette uh, iconically kind of fades into what you'd expect to see for a large scale model, if that makes sense. Like I don't, I don't want to overwhelm it with detail where you can't tell what you're looking at anymore. So like large, simple areas with just big, you know, open space, like uh, flat panels is good. And then contrasting that with areas of 
high frequency detail in between, and then also trying to get depth into the, the sculpt here as well. Because, you know, this is essentially sculpting because like there's no, there's no real detailed plan of this up close. We get a vague sense of it in the movies. And I took a lot of time watching the opening shots of Revenge of the Sith over and over again to see that part where they fly, um, you know, past, they, they do the flyby in the, in the edit twos past the, the bridges. Um, and then later on when they dive over the, the front section of the Venator and go down, there's a couple of other shots of different Venators kind of at a medium distance where you can see the bridge pretty well. So I took a lot of inspiration from that and of course looked at various 3D models and toys and other things that people have made to get an idea. But when you, know, when you get up like this close, right, there's nothing to really be your guide. You kind of just have to make it up at that scale. And that's the fun of this is getting to invent all of those little details. Like I don't know if you get this close to the back of this thing, if this is what it really looks like, but I'm just having fun, you know? And as long as the overall shape is right, I feel like we're golden. All right, and now let's take a quick look at the interior of this because yes, I did at this early stage, I wanted to think about adding some interior detail and the bridge just seems like a perfect place to do that. So you pull, pull off the front lid here and you can see down in here, the bridge, the iconic walkway down the center, the little, uh, pits off to the side here where officers will be sitting and strategizing. That obviously carried through and became the main standard design for pretty much every Star Destroyer at, at any scale. They ended up having pretty much the same looking interior for the bridge, which is kind of funny to think about even when uh, Star Destroyers by the time of the First Order get absolutely gigantic. They still have the same basic bridge layout from all the way back here in the old um, Republic days. So. Uh, we have a representation for the hollow strategy table in here that's far too big, but I just wanted to put something in there. And then the uh, the sort of strategy screens off to the side here with the, the different hollow displays and things that are projected onto those. Uh, you know, nobody really exactly knows how those work, but they always have some sort of graphics in the background on a transparent screen. So that's, that's what I decided to do. And then just fill this in, you know, pretty roughly here with uh, just some idea for um, internal structure and such, um, you know, nothing too fancy. And um, this is a hollow space that goes all the way back through and connects up to right here. So what my plan is, is to, when I eventually do attach this, have wiring running up through the bridge sections and uh, put some LEDs down here so that the beautiful blue windows of the Venator will shine uh, through the model and you'll be able to get a nice pleasant effect in here for you know, looking like this thing is, is really, um, you know, doing business <laughs> with the lights and everything that really will help it come to life. So that's basically it for the bridge. Um, what I have to do now is, uh, you know, order the parts to make a second one because I don't want to just deplete my entire collection right away. This, this already took up a surprising number of parts. So what I'm going to try to do is I think make a rough copy of this in the studio and then uh, order the parts for bridge part number two. Uh, but I did want to talk about some parts usage and some of my thought process behind that. So because this is going to be such a gigantic model, I have to make use of everything I have in my collection. So the things that I'm uh, doing to help to kind of um, make this affordable for myself is I'm using all my old gray parts that I have now separated out into their own drawers because people always complain when um, you put old gray into a mock with new gray, especially if it's a mock where you actually have to order old gray parts, people don't like that at all. Um, because obviously, understandably, right, they're older, they're discontinued, they're sometimes harder to get a hold of, and the quality is kind of iffy. Like, so you could see here, this one is particularly sun damaged, this one not as much, but they're, they all have varying degrees of yellowing and damage from, you know, just being. Uh, for just existing for this many years. <laughs> and so I understand that. So I separated those from my collection uh, and I'm going to use pretty much everything I have that I can in this mock because um, I have it, it's Lego, and this is not ever going to get instructions made for it. It's just for me. And so I can totally do it. And from a distance, you will never know, like you'll never be able to pick that out other than to know that there's a sort of a patchwork of different colors. And I'm already mixing in you can see here, uh, sand blue, dark tan, tan, there's even a white brick in here um, because I really want this to not, to feel gray from a distance, but when you get up close to feel a lot more detailed and a lot more like, um, you know, realistic because there's a lot of different colors and things of, of different um, sections up close. And I think that that feels appropriate. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna be mixing in all my old gray. So that's that. And then also I'm gonna be using parts that I have a lot of from various Lego sets. So for an example of that is these rail pieces here. I have a ton of these because I had the Daily Bugle set 
and I really, really loved it, but I kept it together for a long time. But then eventually I took it apart and now I have a bunch of these lying around. So there's some here, there's some down here. So I'm integrating those because I have a lot of them and it's a really smart piece to use because it gives you that really high fidelity detail up close with these little um, notches. Um, and it just looks unique as a Lego piece. It gives you a little bit of a different feel to just building up sections with regular bricks. So that's like uh, one way that I'm trying to vary up the texture when you get up close and also use up the parts that I have. And also the interior of this, so this is all pretty much gray because it's just a single layer of bricks thick. But uh, when I get down into the major like bulky sections of this, it's gonna have a lot more like of mixed colors and things in there. So it's gonna be a fun challenge trying to figure out what I don't need uh, in the future for other mocks and then using those colors in here because once they're in this model they're pretty much going to be locked in there there's not going to be an easy way for me to access those things so um yeah it's um hey there you go like this is a function you didn't know this had this can move up and down it's actually a radar dish no i'm just kidding but it's just the way that that's attached in there but yeah so i think um i think that the approach is working really well so far you know like i said from a distance when you first come in the room and you see this venator you're going to see this and you're going to see a monotone light gray you will not pick up your eye will not pick up the dark tan it will not pick up um, even the the things like the black because it's a neutral color will fade away pretty well and all you'll perceive is a gigantic gray object with a red stripe down the front and so that gives me a lot more flexibility to use parts that uh you might not think would go with the vanity so um yeah i'm really really happy with how these windows look i'm really happy with the overall feel of this bridge it feels very venator to me and um, just all the little smaller details, just by virtue of using interesting part selections, uh, it just feels great to me. And it, it feels so good to just be like actually going on this, you know? <laughs> that's, the, that's the main kind of takeaway for me is I'm just excited to be building this. So yeah, there's part one, there's the bridge done. Um, and I couldn't be more thrilled. All right, so there we go, guys. That's the video for today, part one. Uh, I'm very, very excited to be going here. I just wanted to put my little nanoscale venator here next to it so we can see this red bridge. This is the uh, Clone Wars version with the, com uh, this is a command ship, so it has the red bridge. Um, but just, yeah, putting this next to this to see what we're doing here uh, as far as the scale, it just, it feels so crazy and I'm so excited. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is going to be a huge project. And if you guys want to support me in my efforts, please do like and share and subscribe and uh, leave comments on the videos. That helps YouTube to uh, know that this is something people are interested in and therefore I can get more ad revenue, which will go directly into purchasing parts for this. And uh, if you guys want to support me even further and directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash two bricks and you can sign up for uh, any of the tiers that you like that will help tremendously. And so today's patron shout out for the video goes to Tempestas Design. And Tempestas is a fairly recent um, supporter of mine on here as far as uh, being at the tier to get a shout out. So I'm really, really excited to be able to give them a shout out uh, now. They, their name came up for the draw and uh, I'm super thrilled for them as well. Uh, so thank you so much Tempestus Design for the help that you've been giving me ever since you upgraded and uh, that's been again literally helping me to purchase Lego bricks to put into this monster piece here as well as all of the other projects that I have on the back burner. So um, much much appreciated for the support and I love how active you are in the Discord community. Let's keep that going and um, so that's going to do it for today. So if you guys want to get yourself a shout out as well or if you want to um, just purely uh, assist me to purchase Lego bricks, please do consider heading on over and checking out the, the tiers that we have available. I'm actually very happy with um, how that's all going and I think folks are enjoying the, the perks that we're um, putting on offer so far. So very, very pleased about that. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next video. I'm gonna try to uh, keep these fairly regular and so I have to figure out what I'm gonna build next. Um, but until then, thank you so much for watching and may the force be with you.